Mostly cloudy, rainy day in the Steel City. Welcome back to Hines Field. And let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team, Laura Oakman. Tom, you talked about the Calvin Johnson matchup. Steelers quarterback Ike Taylor said he had a box in his step all week, knowing he was going to shadow Calvin today. He said, I might be 6'2", he might be 6'5". That means I can't out-jump him, but I have to be as physical as him. However, my mindset is just as important as my technique. i got to think like a boxer. I've got to take some hits, I know that, but i got to get back in the ring and land a few punches of my own. FYI, Ike is a huge trash talker. Calvin is not. He told me it doesn't matter. I'm going to talk a lot of trash out loud to myself. Hopefully Calvin will think I'm a little bit crazy. Brian? Well, Laura, if that's what you're thinking, they may have to rethink it because as good as Ike Taylor is, I think he's going to need a lot of help over the top with the safeties or the linebackers buzzing underneath. Detroit has won the toss, elected to receive, so we'll get a look at that matchup right from the get-go. Alvin Johnson, the second most receiving yards in the NFL, up over 900. And the incredible game, of course, Brian, you were there in that thriller against the Dallas Cowboys. And what you've got to remember is as great a game as he had, Reggie Bush was big in that game, and down the stretch, Chris Durham is the one that had the big catch that put him in position to score. So they've got a lot of assets. Ryan still without Nate Burleson. They're hoping to have him back by Thanksgiving. So here we go. Michael Spurlock will take it back through the end zone, and that's where the Lions will put it in play in the 20. 25-year-old Highland Park, Texas native Matthew Stafford, 99 career touchdowns. And he enters a game 68 yards shy of breaking Bobby Land's franchise record for passing yards. It's Stafford's this season, but his fourth is a full-time starter because he got hurt, you may remember, his rookie year. Coming out throwing, looked like he lost his footing, his playing foot. But able to complete the pass to the 25 to his tight end, Pam Brandon Pettigrew. The Lions on offense, six overall. As Pettigrew has not gotten back up on his feet. Boy, this would be tough for the Lions, Tom. We talk about the impact that it would have. You know, you've got to account for Calvin Johnson. Well, they got Reggie Bush. They've got Pettigrew. They've got all sorts of assets. This would hurt if he doesn't come back in. This was not pretty. That left knee. Good sign here. This game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Taking a look still at Pettigrew, who did get up and walk off the field without a major limp. Well, they're taking a look at his left knee after the five-yard completion, and this is Reggie Bush, a former Heisman Trophy winner out of USC. A gain of three. Now, the Steelers minus two of their best defenders today, and Brett Kiesel out with an injured foot, and Lamar Woodley out with an injured calf. Well, it's going to fall on Cameron Hayward and Lawrence Timmons to hold up that inside, and Troy Palomalu and Roy, uh, Ryan Clark over the top of Ike Taylor is going to be a big part of limiting Calvin Johnson. Lions on third down, the seventh best team in the NFL. Steelers on defense, third down, right around the middle of the pack and out of shotgun. On the money to Reggie Bush and into the open field and up to the 44-yard line, a first down for the Lions. Scramble for the football, the Steelers say they have it. Although it looks like the officials are pointing at the ground saying that's where the ball came loose. It is Lions football. We've talked about Reggie Bush coming out of the slot here, and they only brought a three-man rush. They had plenty of bodies underneath, but they swabbed it out and got the ball to Reggie Bush anyway. Heard the crowd reacting to the replay, and the Lions snapped the ball so quickly that Mike Tomlin could not throw the challenge flag. Well, we're going to see here the ball did come out, but the Lions very smartly got the, the play off, the next play off. His knee was down just as it came out. Hard to see how the challenge would have been held up. Either way, the Lions got the next play off quickly to avoid just that. 
But Reggie Bush has been quite a pickup for these Detroit Lions. Brought him in as a free agent. And they set up a screen the other way to Joy Bell. Short pickup. Makes up third down and six. Let's take one more look. And that play by Bush a moment ago. Well, this would have been big just as it's right here. That knee is down right into here, and the ball has not yet come out. So the Lions obviously dodging a huge bullet there. Even with the review, it looks like he would have been held on. Well, they spot the ball to 48, which means it's third down and seven. And Bush to the sideline. Four-man rush all day to throw. And it is a completed pass to the 38-yard line. And that's Joseph Fourier, the rookie out of UCLA, who's spelling the injured Pettigrew. Well, so far, the Pittsburgh Steelers haven't been able to put on much of a pass rush, particularly with this rookie right side of the Detroit Lions with Larry Wolford and Leandre, Leandre Waddle. Reggie Bush, Calvin Johnson already their impact. We've already seen with Reggie Bush. Calvin Johnson's presence is going to be felt pretty soon here. Grab of the game and Bush takes the ball from Stafford and not much running room. Let's check in downstairs with Laura. Just with a quick update on Brandon Pettigrew right now, Tom, they have done a serious uh, tape job on that left knee, as you guys said. That's definitely what the injury was. You know how important a guy is to his team when the head coach keeps coming over saying, is he okay, and checking on him. Right now, Brandon's off the table testing that knee with that, uh, with that tape job, but looking to get back in there. Big athletic, former number one pick out of Oklahoma State. Bush once more gets the football and spins his way to the 31-yard line. It'll bring up third down and a long two for the Lions on this opening drive. Tom, the running game of the Detroit Lions is pretty straightforward. They rely on the strength and the athleticism of Reggie Bush, and more importantly, his vision. It's primarily just a straight zone scheme. He sees the hole that he wants to go to and then can burst through it. Ninth play of the drive. And Pettigrew is back in the game. Wide open, and Stafford missed it. That makes you wonder, Brian, is the football just slick enough that could have caused that errant throw by Stafford. Boy, and Stafford's wishing he could have that back just a little bit over the top of the outstretched street stretched hands of Reggie Bush. That thing likely would have scored because it got totally clapped inside. Are you surprised by this decision by Jim Schwartz going for it, fourth down and three? You know, he has a lot of confidence as an offense, and he's got to know getting up early is going to be key for Detroit. Three-man rush. Batted away. Batted an eye on Johnson, and Ike Taylor was right there with it. So the first time Taylor is tested in his matchup against Johnson, and Taylor delivers the goods. This game is sponsored by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. A missed chance early on for the Detroit Lions. They give it away on down. So now Ben Roethlisberger is hit on 64% of his passes this season. 13 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. They'll try and crank up the running game today. And a big hole for the rookie out of Michigan State, Le'Veon Bell. Well, we got to go back and look at the missed opportunities. Reggie Bush in the backfield here, right here, slips out. He might have scored the ball just a little bit overthrown. And then on a fourth down play, Calvin Johnson not able to hold on to the ball. Bell spins out of one tackle. And then is wrapped up all the way back at the 35-yard line. They're going to spot it from where the contact was initially made. What a break that is for the Steelers. Because he had broken free of the first tackle and appeared to lose another five yards, but apparently the whistle had blown, so it's at the 41. Heath Miller, the 
tight end who's been very quiet over the last month, drawing a lot of coverage from opposing defenses up to the 46 and an early third down for the Steelers. Well, obviously the Pittsburgh Steelers are trying to catch the Detroit Lions off guard with a hurry up offense that we have not seen a lot out of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are at home. Communication should not be a problem. the chains to the 44. Well, anytime, yard pickup. anytime you run a no huddle offense, what you're trying to do is calm down the defensive calls. Maybe you can get more simplified pressure package. Maybe they'll check to a more basic zone coverage. Right now, Pittsburgh is in rhythm. Put it in the hands of Sanders, and that was read beautifully on defense. Coming all the way up to slow him down from the free safety spot, Lewis Delmas, Todd Haley. Has certainly heard it from the fan base and the media since becoming offensive coordinator prior to last year. Some felt like he had major run-ins with Ben Roethlisberger, although Ben says everything's good now. Slipping down to the 40-yard line, Le'Veon Bell. Another third down coming up for the Steelers. And, you know, when you run the no huddle, it's not necessarily, you're not hurrying all the time. It's an orchestrated, they're not in a no huddle pace in terms of like the end of a half or a game, but very orchestrated just trying to catch Detroit in more basic calls. And so far, it's working. Looks like a full start on the left tackle. Kelvin Beecham. Full start, number 68, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. You know, the other part of it, too, is, Brian, I mean, why not try something different? The Steelers, along with the St. Louis Rams, are the only two teams in the NFL to have not scored a single point on their opening drive in a game. And it's unexpected. You're exactly right. At home, Detroit has not seen a lot of this out of Pittsburgh. Typically, you might huddle up on a third down call. This was tough for the Steelers in a convertible third medium that now is a third and long due to the procedure penalty. Well, third and 11, they need to get down to the 34, and very, very close on the reception to Antonio Brown, who leads the NFL with his 68 catches all the year. It depends on the spot. It looks like he might have enough. Steelers are already in the line of scrimmage, saying that is a first down. See Antonio Brown walking over there and saying, Take a look at where you have it and take a look at where the markers are, but they're going to bring out the change just to make sure. Well, when you throw a slant on third and 10 plus, you're betting on the athleticism of your receiver, and that was a good bet with Antonio Brown because he looked like a return man on that one, weaving through the secondary of the Detroit Lions. It is a first down. Now we talked about Antonio Brown and the impact he can have on the game. That's just a quick little pick screen coming off inside. That's a long way to go to get a first down. When you catch the ball on the line of scrimmage, he's certainly up to the task. 68 receptions of most by a Steeler through the first nine games in franchise history. Today, the Steelers' 10th game of the season. Roethlisberger cuts it loose. And slipping tackles it into the open field and into the end zone goes Antonio Brown. Fourth receiving touchdown this season for the fourth year wideout out of Central Michigan. Well, the plan is clear-cut for Pittsburgh. Get the ball in the hands of our playmakers quickly. Let him make a play just like this. Antonio Brown and Emmanuel Sanders, two of the more big play receivers in this league with Ben Roethlisberger. Sean Sleeves on the point after is good. So for the first time this year, in week 11, their 10th game, the Steelers on their opening drive put points on the board. Brown and company race out to a 7-0 lead. 
Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost, fuel economy, and a whole lot more. By the new Windows, one experience for everything in your life. And by State Farm, it pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Welcome back to Pittsburgh. Eight plays, 70 yards in hurry up mode for the Steelers. Capped off by the 34 yard touchdown. Ben Roethlisberger to Antonio Brown. And Detroit defense over there looking for answers. Well, we talked about Pittsburgh not running a lot of no huddle. They have, but never this early. And that clearly caught the Detroit Lions off guard. Once again, Sleazen with a good deep kick. So Nick Spurlock through the back of the end zone. Stafford and the Lions look very good before it's stalled on their opening drive. They'll be back at it when we return to the NFL on Fox. Steelers come out defensively with a 7-0 lead. Matthew Stafford, a second straight drive, which begins at his own 20. Slip a couple of tackles, picks up a couple of yards. Now we mentioned the two big defenders on the Steelers side, Kiesel and Woodley, inactive today. But they're not the only two. Still no Nate Burleson. They hope to have him back. He started practicing this week. They'd like to have him back by Thanksgiving. And again, no Ziggy Ansa, the number one pick. Woodley, Kiesel, and starting guard Ramon Foster out for the Steelers, although their offensive line on that first drive didn't miss it. Yeah, not at all. They got Guy Winter in for him. The fact that he gets to practice it all week and going to guard as opposed to just coming into the game is huge. Blitz coming. Lions pick it up. And then badly overthrown by Stafford. He had an eye on Pettigrew. Third down coming up. Let's check in for the first time back in Los Angeles today with Joel Platt. Hi, Joel. Hey, Tom. We take you guys to a Chicago, Baltimore. Long touchdown drive, 48 yards, total rush yards on that drive for Ray Rice. He takes it in for the score. 7-0 Ravens. Back to Pittsburgh, Tom. Well, I've had more people ask me what has happened to Ray Rice this year. Well, I don't know that he's totally healthy. Plus, the other receivers they've lost, they don't have the same passing game. They're able to focus on Ray Rice in that running game. Third down and eight. Great protection again. And looking down the sideline, and Stafford misses another wide-open receiver. This time it was Kevin Ogletree who had gotten behind the Steeler defense. So it's three and out this time for Detroit. Yeah, Ogletree got behind William Gay. Matthew Stafford just needed a little bit more air. This thing would have been huge, and as we're seeing here, Antonio Brown. He can impact this game as a returner. It's rare to see a starting wide receiver used as much in the return game as Antonio Brown. But when you're three and six, hey, you got to pull out all the stops. Yeah, 24-yard return, a 50-yard return last week in the win over Buffalo, and this is returnable from the 28. And tripped up. Out to the 37. And springs back to his feet. Roethlisberger and the Steelers out to a seven-nothing lead. A good start for Pittsburgh defensively. And offensively, their first possession, eight plays, 68 yards, and a touchdown. Roethlisberger perfect on the opening drive. The touchdown pass to Antonio Brown from 34 yards. Le'Veon Bell, who grew up just outside of Columbus, Ohio, but played collegiately at Michigan State. They have high hopes for this young man. He Got hurt during the preseason. They're still in hurry-up mode. And Bell did not play until the fourth game of the year. He's got nearly 350 rushing yards. like it should have been caught. Well, this is just good coaching by Mike Tomlin before that series. He told the officials, we're going to continue with the no huddle because you don't want the officials to get caught off guard all of a sudden by the pace of it. And obviously, they're going to stick with this no huddle until the Detroit Lions can stop. Mike Tomlin, 41 years old, grew up in Newport News, Virginia. Played collegiately at William & Mary College. <laughs> Hard to believe it's already his seventh year as head coach of the Steelers. Roethlisberger, a rock 
take it into the arms of Antonio Brown to convert on third and long. Well, whether it's no huddle or the design of the Detroit Lions, they're just, they're not getting home with this four-man rush. They only have 15 sacks on the year, and Ben Roethlisberger can extend a play all on his own, even if you get a good rush on him. Right now, with the four-man rush of the Detroit Lions, they're not getting anywhere close to Ben Roethlisberger. They may have to dial up a little more pressure from the linebackers or maybe bring one of the safeties off the edge. First down, Steelers at the Detroit 47-yard line. He's telling us right here, he may be getting ready to do just that. Four-man rush, and Roethlisberger steps up and finds Antonio Brown inside the 15 to the end zone. Steelers have jumped all over the Detroit Lions. A 47-yard touchdown reception. Ben Roethlisberger climbs the pocket brilliantly and always looking downfield. Antonio Brown, Lewis Delmas, who I had circled earlier, missed the jam on Antonio Brown. There's no way he's going to catch up with the speedy receiver. Already four catches, 105 yards in this one for Antonio Brown. That's his third 100-yard receiving game this season. Squeeze him the point after. And how about this? The 6-3 Lions. They are taking it on the chin early against the 3-6 Pittsburgh Steelers. But now 70 receptions on the year. That's a new career high for Antonio Brown. Of course, he was sharing a lot of the spotlight, Brian, with Mike Wallace, who now is in Miami. And Brown is having a spectacular year. Well, you can't keep everybody. And as much as the Pittsburgh Steelers didn't want to let Wallace go, obviously sitting there with Antonio Brown and Emmanuel Sanders, you make those tough choices. It looks like they chose right. Well, these Lions have to be stunned. Steelers have had the ball twice. And in the blink of an eye, a 14-0 lead. Spurlock will bring it out of the end zone. And a good return by Spurlock. Going out of bounds. The 33 yard line. Oh, we've seen the missed opportunities overthrowing Reggie Bush on a fourth down, missing the slant throw or the drop by Calvin Johnson. And then the deep ball had a sure touchdown written all over it. Kevin Ogletree, and again, Matthew Stafford, as good as anybody in the league, not quite on it yet today. Stafford hit on his first four passes, but then after that wide-open miss to Reggie Bush, that has started a string where he has missed on four in a row. They'll go back to the ground game in Bush, and not much running room there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Alamalu there, Cameron Hayward there. Join Jay and Dan on Fox Sports Live. All the scores and highlights from a full day of action around the world of sports. I'll recap every NFL game, the new BCS standings, and the first week of college basketball. Fox Sports Live tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern only on Fox Sports 1. Traffic finds Durham, and he's a couple of yards shy of the first down up to the 42-yard line. And you just get the feeling if momentum means anything, Brian, and we know in football that it does. Granted, only three minutes left in the first quarter, but this feels like an important third down for the line. It does, because they have to stem the emotion of the Pittsburgh Steelers at home. And this crowd, kind of a late-arriving crowd, a little subdued early, but they've gotten into it now with the Steelers coming off on a quick start. Steelers wearing these throwback jerseys to 1934. They hand it off, and Joint Bell spins his way up to the 47-yard line. And that is the first down for Bell. Attended Wayne State in downtown Detroit, Michigan. Former Harlan Hill Trophy winner, the best player in Division II. 
Five teams waived him or placed him on their practice squad. And last year, he rushed for better than 400 yards, had 52 catches out of the backfield. Bell, a very important part of this Detroit offense. And he'll get it again. This is power football here from Bell. Wraps that ball up and all the way down to the 35. Nice job by Joy Bell. You know, he's the bigger back, but watch how he hits in the line and then sidesteps to the outside, puts a little speed on, carrying his pads very well, good and physical. You think about the Detroit Lions and the struggle they've had at running back, but now they've got not only Reggie Bush, Joy Bell, and Theo Reddick is a part of the rotation as well. Uncharacteristic of the Lions, they're fairly deep at running back this year. They do not have Montel Owens to be. Two weeks ago, they hand it once more to Bell. And he picks up one, second down and nine. Jarvis Jones, a rookie out of Georgia, the Steelers' number one pick there to meet it. And we're seeing Detroit almost exclusively a three wide or a spread out alignment. You do not want to play a Dick LeBeau coach defense in the box. And by that I mean get in two backs or get it all bunched up. They have at it with that front seven of theirs, very multiple. You want to spread them out and isolate them just like they're doing right now with Reggie yeah. Bush up here at the top. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. First catch of the game by Johnson. Slips by Taylor and then carries down to the 19-yard line. I talked about how Ike Taylor is going to take on Calvin Johnson. If he plays off like this, typically there's somebody underneath that needs to buzz underneath it because you give him this kind of cushion with nothing else underneath, Calvin Johnson's able to take the ball and out, muscle you down the field for big yardage. That will be the final play in the opening quarter, a quarter completely dominated by the Pittsburgh Steelers. 14-0, but Detroit knocking on the door. You're watching the NFL on Fox. First nine games this season in the opening quarter, the Steelers, the fewest points scored in the NFL, 19 in those nine games. 14 on two drives today. Stafford pump fakes, now looking to the end zone. And it's incomplete. That is excellent coverage by Taylor. You know, we've talked about Taylor before this game got started. And you look back at the job he has done on some of the best receivers in the NFL this year. A.J. Green, six catches, 41 yards. Brandon Marshall, five catches, 52 yards. And Torrey Smith of Baltimore, who's led the world in receiving yards, had three catches head-to-head -head against Taylor. Well, yeah. second down. And just got much money from there. Let's check in quickly before third down with Joe Platt in Los Angeles. Yeah, Tom. Uh, severe weather in the area in Chicago. So the Ravens and Bears will head in. The game has been suspended indefinitely with that severe weather. And we will let you know when they resume. Worth the note, Baltimore had a weather delay in week one at Denver. So the second time they're dealing with this on the season, Tom. Ravens are going to wonder now, the, the lights going out in the Super Bowl and out of the weather, there's a higher force involved here. Nice play of the drive. Third down. And Pettigrew a little too tall off the fingertips. That should have been a touchdown. We'll have to take another look at that one, but Stafford just slightly off on his biggest throws today. Doesn't take much, and you talk about slight. It is just that. Excuse me, he's on the inside in here. They spread it out right over the top, needed to bring it down just a little bit. Normally, Pettigrew would bring that down, but a little flat, a little high. They're lucky that wasn't intercepted after being tipped up. I don't think you could categorize that as being a drop. 35-yard field goal try, and it's off the upright and good. Four misses already this year for Akers, and he's thanking a higher power after that break. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads.
by Citizen Echo Drive. Fueled by light, it never needs a battery. And by AT&T. Rethink possible. The Romanti Brothers sandwiches, a signature with stuffed French fries here in Pittsburgh. They, they started those chains the same year the Steelers were born. My founder, Art Rooney, back in 1933. I had strict instructions from my wife and my cardiologist to behave myself in Pittsburgh this weekend. I was told by my wife to double up, so what does that mean? <laughs> uh, you're young. Well, maybe she didn't like me as much. A 14-3 game. And Felix Jones will take a knee. Steelers have started quickly here today. And, of course, Brian, one of the real... Uh, Problems for their season as a whole is falling into a hole early in games. And when they haven't, obviously, is when they've been the most productive. The interesting thing about this no huddle is they're not doing any substituting. They're staying primarily with that same group that's not giving Detroit a chance to regroup. I'd be surprised if Gunther Cunningham doesn't have a few more pressures dialed up now that he knows he's going to see this no huddle. Lady. Well, they give it to Antonio Brown, and that did not fool DeAndre Levy. Back there to drag him down all the way at the 11-yard line. Levy is having an outstanding year. Tied for the NFL lead in interceptions. They moved him outside, inside, back outside. Good player out of Wisconsin. Mathis, too much the veteran now. He knows exactly how you can plaster up on these receivers, doing a nice job. He's a nice balance, veteran-wise, to go with the young rookie, Darius Slay, who they really believe in. He's just young, and having a veteran like Rasheed Mathis back there to work with him as well is huge. They're down at 17. They need to get all the way up to the 30-yard line. In the hands of Brown. Beat one man, but Houston there to wrap him up far short of a first down. So for the first time today, a Pittsburgh Steelers series ends without points. And this is just the type of sequence that Jim Schwartz and the Detroit Lions need. Nice long drive, all but coming away with just three points. Now the defense steps in, three and out. Now the offense needs to step back up in what should be good field position. Short punt and then picked up on one bounce by Spurlock and picks up nice yardage. The pushing and shoving, a little jawing going on over there. Calvin Johnson and the Lions slow to get started here in the Steel City. 14 to 3, the Steelers in front of the Detroit Lions. And Brian, look, we see the Lions a lot. And you know what a lot of their fans are saying right now? Here we go again. One of those kind of games where you come in a favorite, even on the road, a game you really, really need, and a long way from over, but a slow start. Yeah, they're not panicking here. They're all right. I'm a little surprised. They're going to have to adjust defensively to the snow huddle, because right now they're not getting a lot of pressure on Roethlisberger. Reggie Bush with a five down. Bush fumbled the football. It's picked up by the Steelers. Lawrence Timmons racing the other way is run out of bounds by Stafford. Now, we have a lot of things going on here. A flag was down originally on the play, right in the middle of the field. Was Bush down? Did he fumble? Walt Anderson, our referee, with many questions to be answered. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. Holding number 67 offense, a penalty is declined. So he just answered them all, and it is Steeler football. We talk 
talked about the emotional response by the Detroit Lions. This is not the response you're looking for. The ball clearly comes out. Reggie Bush really not a, a big strip or a big hit. It just kind of came out on its own. Boy, what a turn of events for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Be interesting to see if now in this situation they stay with the no huddle. No question the ball came out here. And the ability to scoop and score, we used to call it, with Timmons on a dead run. That looked like Will Allen was the one who, on that second look, punched the ball right away from Reggie Bush. Allen, a guy the Dallas Cowboys let go with all the problems they've had in their secondary. And Allen came right back to the Steelers. The Steeler defense, you may remember, their first four games, they lost all four. The worst start in 45 years. Ryan, a Steeler defense that did not have a single takeaway the first four weeks of the season. Yeah, but you're talking about a Dick LeBeau coach group now. You talk about the old master. Tom, he came into this league, has been in this league longer than you've been alive, and you're old. <laughs> it's amazing. And, and Dick LeBeau, nothing that he hasn't seen on a football field does he not have an answer for in this defense so far. Stepping up to the challenge to this high-powered Detroit Lion offense, and right now the offense seems to have the answer for the defense. Again, I'll be interested to see if they stay with the no huddle now that they're already in scoring position. By the defense, the ball will be moved back to the spot where the ball was when the whistle was blown. Wow. Boy, go figure. Dick LeBeau's wondering how, you know, the old Aaron whistle. How many, I wonder how many Aaron whistles has got him before and all the time that he's been in this league. They still get the ball, but obviously without the great field position that they would have had. Dick LeBeau, 76 years old, grew up in London, Ohio, was a two-way player on Ohio State's national championship team going back to 1957. The Cleveland Browns, coached by Paul Brown, drafted him in the fifth round that year and cut him. Was picked up by the Lions and became a Hall of Fame player. And look what he has done as a coach here in Pittsburgh with his Steeler defense. Well, apparently, yeah, I'm not quite clear why the ball is never heard from Paul Anderson. If it's the interval whistle, it should have been when the ball was recovered. We're wondering, just like you were wondering, and Roethlisberger just flips the ball to Heath Miller, and that'll be a gain of almost 10 on first down. How about the improvisation right there of Ben Roethlisberger? This is classic Ben Roethlisberger. He starts to step up in the pocket. He hasn't had to do a lot of this given the rush. They are bringing secondary people now. He said they need to bring more pressure. This is classic Ben Roethlisberger. I've never seen a player in the history of this league get more productivity out of fewer throws and in that way than Ben Roethlisberger. Dominican Sue is going to wrap up Felix Jones on first down. Hey, Ryan, I want to ask you a little bit about Sue and Fairley. Much is made about these guys, talk about them being dirty players and on and on and on. That's not what I want to ask you. I want to ask you how you have this kind of defensive front and you have 15 sacks for the year. Yeah, but they still get a lot of hits on the quarterback. It's not just sacks. So far, they haven't got a lot of pressure today. That has been a one wolf shake in the armor of this entire defense. As that catch is made close to another Steeler first down. And that's Marcus Wheaton, the rookie out of Oregon State, with just his fourth catch of the season. Yeah, he's going to spread it around out here. We talk about Sanders and Brown. All of a sudden, the one-on-one -on -one coverage. You saw everybody else doubled up. They get one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Chris Houston. That's exactly where Ben Roethlisberger goes. Now, Wheaton was in there because Sanders left off one play ago. Maybe on Bell will take the ball from Roethlisberger. Bounces it to the outside. Goes by Young. Leapfrogs Houston. About that show of athleticism from Le'Veon Bell. He just figures, I'm just going to jump over the top of this guy. I'll ask it again. When does it occur to you to do that? <laughs> when does it occur to you that I think I can go exactly over the top of the guy? That can sometimes turn out bad if Houston stands up just a little quicker. Right there, DeAndre Levy was given a pretty good blow. It was a nice move. 
but he's feeling it right now. Tipped the ball and nearly intercepted. Right through the hands of Le'Veon Bell, who is a very dependable receiver out of the Steeler backfield. Yeah, Ben thought he was going to get a touchdown here. The ball bounces up, and that thing is up in the air for an eternity for a quarterback. You know, the weather today is certainly a factor. These are strong on quarterbacks with big, big hands. I don't know that we can really look at the weather and say that's the reason for a couple of the miscues, a number of them by Matthew Stafford, that last one by Ben Roethlisberger. The third down and six, and the Steelers are going to call timeout. Already leading 14 to 3. You know, the Steelers, we started to talk about beginning this year at 0 and 4. They had a bye week. They've won three of their last five including last week against Buffalo. Now, when you're three and six, you figure your chances of getting into the playoffs are not very good, but all of a sudden, a six and two Cincinnati team has gone to six and four. That is a huge game inside the division in Cincinnati today, the Bengals against the Browns. And weather delay, albeit the Ravens off to a big start in Chicago. So the Steelers feel like they have a shot. But obviously, Brian, they'd have to play a lot better these last six weeks of the season than they have the first nine. And they're saying the same thing in the NFC North. Don't think for a second that Green Bay and Chicago aren't saying the same thing here. Let's don't give this division title away just yet. Four man rush. And Roethlisberger just throws it away. The last instant, Israel Adonijah and Sue putting a little bit of heat on Roethlisberger, so out comes the field goal unit. And that's a clear-cut win for the Detroit Lions defense. Remember the previous series, they had a three and out, put in great position for the offense, then they get the fumble by Bush, now get put on a short field and answered, holding the Pittsburgh to just three points. 25-yard field goal attempt by Sweezen, who has missed just two field goals all year long. Kick. It began with the takeaway. Will Allen jarring it loose from Reggie Bush. Good effort by the Lions defense, but the Steelers tack on three. Today's game is sponsored by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. 17-3 in favor of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, Brian, I guess uh, we were able during the break to get a little clarification on what may have happened on that fumble yeah. and then a subsequent return. We thought the inadvertent whistle was maybe at the recovery, which would have brought the ball all the way back near the 40. Evidently, the, the errant whistle was further down on the return. That's why it only made a few yards difference. It would have been a 31-yard differential where they recovered the fumble as opposed to when the whistle was blown during the return. Spurlock. Brings it up to the 21-yard line. You have a hard time, though, hearing the whistle. You be the judge. But obviously, they didn't hear as the ball comes out. Had there been the whistle here, the ball would not have gone back to Detroit. Review would have shown it was clearly a fumble. That Pittsburgh came up with the ball. It would have been spotted there. But somewhere along here after the return, as Timmons going down the field, for some reason, the whistle was blown earlier, and it just came back a couple yards. Bush over on the sideline. Joy Bell is in the game. They think it to Bell. Stafford looking down the field for Calvin Johnson. He's got it to the 35, and Johnson is gone. To the end zone on the first play, a touchdown. Seventy-nine-yard scoring strike. Stafford to Calvin Johnson. The 100th career touchdown pass for Matthew Stafford. Brilliantly designed play by Scott Lanahan. The offensive coordinator, they bring everybody across the field. Again, we said Calvin Johnson, there should be help over the top. Ike Taylor did not have that help, and you're not going to tackle this guy up high. He just gives him a shoulder shrug, and Megatron is into the end zone. Well, you talk about hitting the lottery if you're Matthew Stafford. 
as a point after is good by Akers. He throws his 100th career touchdown pass and in the process becomes the Lions all-time passing yardage leader. Congratulations, Matthew Stafford. Seventeen to ten, Steelers in front. Talk about Stafford hitting on his 100th career touchdown pass, and boy, I mean he's right up there with all the heavy well, hitters. The number of games it took him to get to 100. Look at these names. Bodes well for the young man. The only thing that Stafford needs now going forward to really be thought in these terms is wins, because he's got all the numbers, he's got all the stats. But in order to be thought of as an elite quarterback, he obviously has to get some wins, get some pelts on his belt, so to speak, in the playoffs into a Super Bowl. Allen booted through the back of the end zone. Well, watch what happens up here, and I want you to watch how all the routes go flowing this way, including the action of Matthew Stafford. He comes out to the right. Stop it right here if you can. Everything flows this way. Look at how it opens up the field over into here. Beautifully designed play by Scott Lanahan, and Ike Taylor is going right now. Yeah, I'll take on the challenge of one-on-one, -on -one, but I could use a little bit of help on this guy on a play like that. Seventeen to ten, Steelers with a lead and the ball. Ten thirteen to play here in the second quarter. Crossing pattern and into the open field is a rookie week. That's the longest reception of this his rookie year. He's playing with a broken finger and playing with a specially made cast on his hand. Well, the same kind of throw we just saw Ben Roethlisberger down in the red zone kind of overthrow on a joint bell. You give a man underneath a chance to run the ball in a full sprint, he's going to get some yardage. 21 yard pick up on the completion and now back to the ground. Le'Veon Bell spins away from one tackle. That's a good run. Up to the 45, a gain of four on first down. And Pittsburgh continues with the no huddle, but we are seeing the Detroit Lions and Gunther Cunningham, the defensive coordinator, dial up a little bit more pressure from the linebackers. We've seen the secondary come up even in the no huddle. Dominican Sue shaking up on that last play. C.J. Moser, number 99, replaces Sue. Le'Veon Bell saying, Reggie Bush has got nothing on me. They'll take him out, coming right out of the backfield, give him a quick little slant route. The linebacker over-pursues to the outside. One of the things they've talked about is the great hands that Le'Veon Bell has. Obviously, he's that compact big back that the Steelers covet, but he's also got excellent hands. Hey, run, run, run. Right Jericho Contrary down here. Batted into the air. They tried to find Contrary and Mattis stepping in to bat it away. Yeah, you're going to see Mathis come here and here. He falls off he, with all these crossing routes. This is clearly what Pittsburgh wants to do. The ball's batted up. Rasheed Mathis, of course, that's why he plays DB. If he could catch the ball, he'd be a wide receiver. Not many opportunities like that. That was Tullock who was in coverage here on Jericho Contra. There's four touchdown receptions in the last two games. And through the process, Miller unable to hang on. He had it. But when he came down, the ball squirted out of there. And it's fitting the through the process was invented by Calvin Johnson and the Detroit Lions. And now Pittsburgh Steelers pay the price. Great catch. It's 
coming down. He's got possession, but you've got to go through the process. The ball squirts out. Right now, the fans are saying, wait a minute, that's a touchdown. He broke the plane. He does not complete the process to the ground all the way through the catch. Good call. Big hit there by Quinn and knock it loose. So now third down and 10. Steelers can get a first down at the two-yard line. Roethlisberger for the first time today is sacked, and it's Nick Fairley who is the first man there. This was less a sack than it is just a collapse. The entire pocket fairly just kind of got there first, but it all totally collapsed around Ben Roethlisberger, and it doesn't happen unless you got good coverage down the field. Nice job by the secondary of the Detroit Lions. Ben Roethlisberger with no place to go. Steelers have given up the most sacks in the NFL, tied with Miami, 37 of them. 39-yard field goal by Sweeza, man. Barely came blasting through the middle of the Steeler offensive line. Encroachment, number 98, defense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Fairly thought he could get a jump on that, just like, like he did last week to break up that two-point play that helped the Chicago Bears, or stopped the Chicago Bears from tying up the game. Against the Detroit Lions just a little bit early that time. 39 becomes a little bit easier. 34 yards now for Sweezy. Ten. Where's Bobby Lane until today, the all-time leader in passing yards and franchise history traded to the Steelers and said the Lions will not win again for 50 years. Interesting to note, the 50th year was the year they went 0-16. So it officially came to an end that year. Well, you talk about, I mean, just so many weird sort of connections. Of course, Matthew Stafford grew up in the same neighborhood. In fact, grew up on the very same street that Bobby Lane grew up on in Highland Park, right outside of Dallas, Texas. And here he breaks his record today. And being a Texas schoolboy, has heard the Bobby Lane stories his entire life, believe me, being in that company for Matthew Stafford means a lot. Coming from where he grew up in Texas, all that Bobby Lane has done, and obviously with the Detroit Lions. Well, it was Bobby Lane who led the Detroit Lions to a win here in Pittsburgh back in 1955. The Lions have not won here since. Now, granted, they've only played nine games. They've gone 0 8 and 1. Stafford directing that. Quick strike, 79-yard touchdown to Johnson a moment ago to become the all-time yardage leader. And on his way to breaking Lane's record as well for touchdown passes in a career. Twenty to ten, very short kick. Spurlock looking for some running room, and not a lot there. Tom, we always look back. We're looking way back to November 13, 1955. The Lions at Pittsburgh in Forbes Field. Lions led 14 to 7 and half and extended the lead 24 to 7. With the Steelers fight back with 21 points in the fourth quarter. The Lions hold on for the win, 31 to 28. Wow. You, were, you weren't even alive. No, I wasn't. Well, you called me old earlier. I was one year old. And you're not real old. <laughs> No Reggie Bush since he fumbled the football. Don't know whether he was shaking up. That looked like a busted play. Stanford just carries himself for a gain of three. Well, Dick LeBeau, boy, he's so sound. And, you know, his, he, he made it real simple for us. It was simple as a screwdriver. Find the guy that's open, get to him. And for defense, get the guy with the ball on the ground. That last big play to Calvin Johnson. Like I always say, don't cover the decoy. You know, they covered all the decoys. They couldn't find Calvin Johnson. Play 
to Bell, screen to Pettigrew, and that is defended perfectly by the Steelers. Lawrence Tennant had nine tackles last week, including his first sack of the year. Today starts his 48th consecutive game. And it's that experience you count on. He saw that written all over it, saw the fake figure. You know what? I'll just hang back here because they got something else. It's that kind of experience that this Pittsburgh Steelers defense, who, frankly, is getting a little longer in the two, particularly in the secondary. That's one of the questions about the Steelers going forward is can they rebuild this defense? Reggie Bush is back in the game. On the far side, this will be a false start. False start, number 81, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. Third and six just became third down and 11. Yeah, this this is the age, and, and predominantly in the secondary, because you're talking about Troy Palomalu, you're talking about Ryan Clark, Ike Taylor, Will Allen, all 10 plus years. They've addressed uh, rebuilding the offensive line, even the receiving court. The secondary is where they've been. They need to readdress now going forward. Yeah. They're down 11, pump faking, and wide open is Pettigrew. Crosses midfield and down to the Steeler 45-yard line. How is he that wide open, Brian? Well, he got open because this is one of the patented zone blitzes. You're going to see pressure coming in here. They void the zone. All of a sudden, you can see him jump inside on Reggie Bush. Talk about the Reggie Bush effect. They just didn't have enough folks in the back end after they zone blitzed and jumped all over Reggie Bush. He ran that shallow route out of the slot. 31-yard gain on the reception by Pettigrew. He's been among the best young tight ends in all the football. Had his issues last year with drops. And Stafford looking down the field again and finds Durham to the 20-yard line. These deep crossing routes are breaking down the secondary of the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're going to see him right in the slot. He crosses in behind the body of the front of the Pittsburgh Steelers with that big voided zone. Troy Palomalu trying to get back in the middle. Troy Palomalu will take some liberty sometimes, whether he was out of position and trying to cover it. The deep crossing routes seem to be the thing that's hurting the Pittsburgh Steelers the most. 25-yard gain on the reception Whoa. by Durham. Things start to open up a little bit more for this Lions offense. Stafford, great protection. And that is a touchdown to Calvin Johnson. Boy, this offensive line has given Stafford enough time to set up a picnic back there, and he is finding open receivers bang, bang, bang for a touchdown. And remember, that's with that rookie right side of that line with Warford Waddle on the right side against the vaunted Pittsburgh Steeler rush. 31 yards to Pettigrew, 25 yards to Durham, and now the 19-yard touchdown. Well, Ike Taylor again, with no disrespect to Ike Taylor, but you need some help. You really do. I mean, Ike Taylor is a fine DB, make no mistake, but Calvin Johnson, that's asking a lot for anybody to go one-on-one -on -one with that guy. David Akers, a point after. And he's down now, but, but he's not touched yet. Let's see what happens. He's up. Now he's up. Doesn't matter. That's a touchdown all the way. You know, Brian, you and I were talking before the game. and You know, in a day and age where it seems like receiver after receiver, and I don't mean every single one of them, but whether it's trash talking, whether it's touchdown dances and celebrations and trying to bring attention to oneself all over the NFL, this is as classy a young man and is under the radar as there is in this league. What just an outstanding young person he is. I hope young people around the league see just what you're talking about, Tom. Throw in a Larry Fitzgerald. Yep. A.J. Green, yep. an up-and-coming young receiver. The class, when you talk about the best of the best in this league, they tend to be that way. A Jerry Rice was not a heavy Precise. trash talker. So you're right, just the sheer class of this young man, not to get drawn into that type of thing. That's what you want young people to see and emulate. I mean, you heard Laurel Oakman before the kickoff, uh, Mike Taylor saying, 
it doesn't make any sense to try and trash talk with Calvin Johnson because he doesn't say anything during the game. Yeah, and, and I, I think the world of Mike Taylor, but you're talking about one of the all-time best to lead him isolated. And Dick LeBeau said, you got to change it up a bunch, and occasionally you're going to end up one-on-one. -on -one. But Matthew Stafford, if you get one-on-one -on -one with Calvin Johnson, he's going to fight you. We look through the, through the history of football. Bambi. The great Lance Allworth. We know about Jerry Rice, a record holder in virtually every receiving category. There's my man Chris Carter. Best hands in the history of the National Football League. And Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson, think about this now. He's had 54 receptions with 37 touchdowns in the red zone. That's an unheard of number. Now, receiving yards through the first 100 games, the thing you got to remember about this, second only to Lance Allward, Johnson's only been with Stafford for four years. And I'm taking anything away from some of the other guys that have played quarterback before Stafford arrived. But when you consider the fact that Johnson now in his seventh season went through his first, really three years, if you include the injury to Stafford, with a, a lot of guys that aren't even starting in the NFL, it is astounding the numbers he's putting up. It is. And in fairness, the rules are a little bit different. Yep. I think Calvin Johnson would have been okay with the old rules as well. I don't think it would have made any difference. Second down and 10. Roethlisberger. Dangerous throw. Good defense there by Houston. On Antonio Brown, let's check in downstairs with Laura Oak. Tom, as the Steelers offense tries to put together a drive with just over three minutes left, they're doing it without Emmanuel Sanders. He's not on the field. He's questionable right now with a right foot injury. And the Steelers start out three for three on third down. They're now 0 for three on their last third downs. That's where this has stalled a little bit now. I notice they're now huddling on third down instead of extending the no huddle. Lions are thinking about a three and out, getting that football one more time before the half. Lions with all three timeouts remaining. And they're going to get the ball. It is a three and out for the Steelers. And all of a sudden, now they were standing and cheering here at Hines Field, the Blue Birds are raining down from the seats. Well, you remember it was a third and long that Antonio Brown took a quick hitch to the outside and went the distance with it. They've tried it three more times on a third and long and have not got the third down conversion. They need to think of something else down the field. Clock running, 2.45 to play. Of course, we have a two-minute warning, and the Lions have all three timeouts remaining. A turnable for Spurlock. And he's tripped up at the 38-yard line. Fox tonight, the next evolution of pop drama is here. Don't miss the groundbreaking show. The critics are raving about almost human. A two-night premiere begins tonight, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on Fox. Last time I did that, I mentioned that uh, there's an almost human uh, Calvin Johnson. <laughs> I, I revised that. He's not human. <laughs> this guy is something special. 2.31 to play. Until halftime, Steelers have looked right from the get-go. Stafford is screaming at the official that there was interference against Johnson on Ike Taylor. And he threw it right into Taylor's hand. This is just a nice job of Ike Taylor recognizing what kind of route it was. They love to clear out and run Johnson on a little inside route. Ike Taylor watches film as well. He beat Johnson to the punch on that one. Matthew Stafford can play all, all he wants. But you know what? He has as much right to that spot as does Calvin Johnson. Second down. And Johnson comes back to get it. He beat Taylor that time on a beautifully thrown ball. Down to the 39-yard line. Clock continues to run. That's just the classic with Matthew Stafford tell us. Just because he's covered doesn't mean he's not open. How many times have they worked this in practice with that little bit of a back shoulder throw using the sheer size? Right now, Mike Taylor's going, come on, man, you're killing me. I need a little help here. We have reached a two-minute warning. Lions down by three. 
Calvin Johnson, 137 receiving yards, couple of touchdowns. Antonio Brown on the first two Steelers' possessions with touchdowns. But now all of a sudden the Lions, who took that punch in the mouth early on, falling behind 14-0. They're coming right at him with Joy Bell on the screen. Inside the 10 to the 5, and Bell is run out of bounds at the 2. Big Larry Warford, the rookie right guard out of Kentucky, leading the convoy. Just watch Joy Bell. This is a beautifully timed screen, and that's the key to screens. Do they time up? Sucks in the defensive line of the Steelers. Everybody downfield has their back turned to it. You see these big linemen. Look at that's a lot of beef down out in front of when you can see Larry Wolford, the rookie, out in front that far down the field. Joy Bell, an excellent receiver out of the backfield, making hay for the Detroit Lions. And now first and goal. And it's still Bell in the backfield. They're going to throw the jump ball. And out of bounds is Calvin Johnson. Yeah, why not when you've got the lump of the jumping ability here? But again, Ike Taylor, nice job. He knows what he can get away with down here. In the old days, that might have been a force out, not today. Nice job by Ike Taylor, knowing they're going to go to that jump ball. Raining harder right now than it has throughout the entire day. They're calling for it all day. Second and goal. Bell. To the end zone. And once more, it was Warford leading the way. Joy Bell is fifth rushing touchdown, and the Lions lead for the first time today. They've come all the way back from 14 0 down. Excellent job by the left side. Watch Warford come around here on that right side. That's a lot of beat. That's 6'3, 340 pounds. Joy Bell goes, you know what? I'm going to climb in behind that big boy and just get into the end zone. Well, I don't think you have to remind Troy Palabalo who Larry Warford is after that screen play and the blow that Warford delivered to Palabalo. That didn't last very long. Antonio Brown scored 37 and a 47 yard touchdown catch. 14 nothing Pittsburgh in the blink of an eye, but back came Calvin Johnson and the Lions. That was a one play drive, 79 yards. But came back from 19 yards out to get within three. And now the touchdown run by Bell, 24 20 Detroit. And we've got to give Detroit a great deal of credit here, Tom. We talked about the pressure on them coming in and playing a three and six Pittsburgh Steelers team. They go home next week against a struggling Tampa Bay team. Like we talked about in the open, this is typically a game that the Detroit Lions tend to struggle a little bit, keeping their focus and finishing. And here they've done just that in a tough place to play here in Pittsburgh. Everything was going Pittsburgh's way. Jim Schwartz team showing the discipline and the emotional toughness to fight through it. And now sitting here going into the half, notwithstanding anything else that might happen, because we're a long way from it being done at a minute 42, up 24 to 20. Well, the Steelers still have plenty of time. This travel starts from the 20. Well, as we do every week, we'd love to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the globe. Watching today's broadcast in 175 countries and abroad ships at sea on AFM, the American Forces Network. We can't thank you enough for all you do. God bless you all. People in the Philippines very thankful for the U.S. military right, right now. We've helped that they're getting in that difficult part of the world right now. Certainly our thoughts and prayers to all of those and those who have family and friends there. Jonathan Dwyer has checked into the backfield. He was there leading Russia a season ago. And he has a football, and that is a seven-yard carry on first down. There is a penalty flag in the backfield. Holding number 78, offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. 
Well, they've taken that new starter at left guard, Guy Wimper, and he's seeing every bit of Indomitian Sue and Nick Fairley and kind of caught up with them here. They're putting one of the two over him on every snap to challenge this new starter on the left side of the line. Well, they ran it on first down. You surprised they're not putting it up? Well, and the fact that they've gone into the no huddle, but this changes the equation now, because if they're not careful now, they still might have to pump the ball back to Detroit. That is caught by Jonathan Dwight. Went after getting off to such a great start. You know what? This is a nice play by Dwyer because if this indeed is dropped, that's going to stop the clock. That's the best thing happened for the Steelers right now. It continues the clock and it forces a timeout call. This is the first charge timeout, Detroit. 30 second timeout. We set the game clock to 129. Well, this is going to bring up, what, a third and 22? Second, Second down. down and 22. I beg you out your pardon after the uh, the penalty. Well, right now, let's quick in ch check in quickly with Curry Menifee to see what's happened on the Visa halftime. Coming up on the Visa halftime, can the Bears pull off the win against the Ravens even without their pilot, Jay Cutler? Will the Jets take flight in Buffalo? And, of course, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy will be here. Is that really what you do during the week? Of course, he won a lot of big games in this city. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I wonder, did he actually land that thing? That was a look he had on his face when he saw Swan and Stallworth down the middle of the field. Up the flag down, catch is made. Question is, is this going to be a penalty in the end zone? Which then would be an automatic safety if they end up calling holding in the end zone. That's going to be a two-point safety for the Detroit Lions. Holding, number 78, number 78. offense. Amen. That penalty is declined. Correction. The penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. It's still second down. So it clearly was not in the end zone. Evident. Sure looked like Roethlisberger was in the end zone to me. We're going to have to see here. Again, Wimper getting beat up on the inside by Sue and Fairley. And the hold happened outside of the end zone. So clearly that's the right call. You can see the left hand pulling down right there on Fairley. So still a minute 20 left. Detroit has two timeouts remaining. It is still only second down. And out of his own end zone, wow. it is dropped by David Paulson, the backup tight end. And it stops the clock. And just like we talked about with Bell or Dwyer catching the ball that forced the timeout call by Detroit, this incompletion saves them a timeout. I'm a little surprised that Pittsburgh, given the time, is still so aggressive down the field. You got a third and a ton here. They got to get halfway to Philadelphia to get the first down here. And, and notwithstanding an unbelievable big play, Detroit Lions are going to get decent field position and yet still another chance for more points. Once more out of the end zone, Roethlisberger. A little breathing room on a completion to Heath Miller, and the Lions will spend their second timeout. A minute 11 to play, and Stafford now looking for that helmet, thinking about adding to this 24 to 20 lead. Yeah, I, I've got a question. The, I, I appreciate the bravado of Pittsburgh feeling, hey, we're backed up inside our 20. We can drive the length. We've been going up and down the field on these Detroit Lions. But, and I won't say it's a misuse of the clock, but any time now you're sitting here and you're having to punt the ball back to a Detroit Lion team that has not been stopped the last couple series and is on top 24 to 20 with just over a minute left and still a timeout in their pocket, Detroit's in great shape here. They used 31 seconds on that drive. They got the ball with a minute and 42 seconds to play and burned off a total of 31 seconds. McGuire punts out of his own end zone. Detroit showing an all-out rush. And it is shanked 
by McBride. Fielded at the 42-yard line by Spurlock. And run out of bounds at the 31. You may remember, there's a penalty flag down now on the far side of the field, right at the line of scrimmage. Wow, he's going to add insult to injury. Although, you would not have him punted again if you're the Lions. No, you but could. if it's against the Lions, what does that mean? Uh, it looks like it's going to be holding. During the kick, holding number 24 receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down Detroit. That's Deshaun Gomes back up safety. Of course, the Steelers have already been through one punter this year who did a lot of this in Zoltan Mesco, and they cut him loose. Yeah, I'm not a golfer, but is this is this called a shank? I used to be a golfer, and I used to have a lot of these, so that's exactly what it is. And you can see it right there. It just comes off the side of the foot. Looks like that kicker at Northwestern last night. <laughs> With the 10-yard wow, punt. Well, I know. Well, well my daughter, daughter son-in-law and daughter went to Northwestern. But it was, wow. a, but it was a bad punt. <laughs> First down. And knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Well, Detroit needs, they, the bad thing about the penalty was they were already in field goal position to start, particularly with the amount of time that they had. They've got about 15 yards to go to get back into anywhere near a makeable field goal, so that's going to affect the play calling as well. That was a 20-yard spread, really, where they would have had the ball. Down at the Steelers' 31-yard line. Boy, Riley Reese moved. They're going the wrong direction right now. Paul Sark, number 71, offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. It's been well documented. I mean, uh, penalties have been a major issue for the Detroit Lions. Not as much last year as in years past. But three huge penalties against the defense last week, although the Lions still managed to win the game. Yeah, and what's amazing about this is is this didn't start out real well for Detroit. Remember, the deep crossing routes and what has been hurting the Pittsburgh Steelers. We may see one here. Stafford looking for Durham. And defended beautifully by Cortez Allen. Third down to long, third and 15. Chris Durham's every bit of 6'6". Cortez Allen doing a nice job like you have to with a big man. you got to time the jump. That's the key here. And again, we talk about Chris Durham. The size of this receiving court, Calvin Johnson, Brandon Pettigrew, Chris Durham. This is as big a receiving court. You can throw up a lot of jump balls. Your favorite throw in the league, I know. You can throw up a lot of jump balls to a lot of people on this Detroit Lions team. Durham played collegiately at the University of Georgia with Matthew Stafford. They better hurry up and get this play off. And they're going to have to burn a timeout. Oh, wow. Is. After an incompleted pass. And they have to use their last timeout of this first half. This has not been a pretty 40 or 50 second time span for the Detroit Lions. Coming up on a Visa halftime. Ravens and the Bears get together. In Chicago, a game halted by bad weather. The Jets, at last check, were being buried by the Buffalo Bills. See, when well, the Bills have had E.J. Manuel yeah. playing, and of course he missed time, it's his second game back this week. They have been a rather competitive team. But the Jets had no chance, because they're in that win one, lose one, win one, lose one. They're in that lose one. The Geno Coaster. The Geno Coaster is uh, getting it today. Way down 15, blitz coming. Stafford steps up, and it is caught a first down to the 37-yard line by who else? Calvin Johnson. You got to kill it here. Of course, you better be careful yeah. if you're Pittsburgh. He might wedge it for a touchdown from the 36. But Palomalu came blasting through that line and put a big-time hit on Rob Sims. Right as that ball was snapped, that looked like it was offsides by Polamalu. Of course, we remember, for some of you that weren't around, the final minute 
And of course, after the big long completion down the field, everybody thinking Stafford was going to spike it. Instead, he jumped over the pile, broke the plane, then went in untouched to the end zone, winning 31 to 30. Malavulu coming, they pick up the blitz. Bell sprinting for the sideline. What a heads up play there by Joint Bell. Brilliant play by Joint Bell. Like Le'Veon Bell for the Pittsburgh Steelers, these backs have excellent hands on both sides to be able to use them in this fashion and to have the wherewithal, obviously, to get out of bounds. Huge. Now, they're in field goal position. They're out of timeouts, but there's plenty of time with 27 seconds. You still have time with the first down. They got the whole field. They can throw in the middle of the field, go up and spike it again. So they've got the full playbook available to them right now. Bell has 78 yards from scrimmage. He has played almost his entire first half after the early fumble by Reggie Bush. Defender fell down. Penalty flag comes in. Johnson makes a catch at the five. A flag will stop the clock. It looks like holding against Pittsburgh in the secondary. Yeah, and Ike Taylor, I think, got a grab on him as he came out of it, or somebody did. And what a stroke of luck for the Detroit Lions, or making their own luck, I guess, really, because Holy the penalty stops 44. the clock. Defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is completed pass. First down. If not for the penalty, Detroit would have had to come up and spike it again. Clearly, the down and distance rely on that. With 21 seconds, they would have had a chance for one, maybe two plays. Now they've got the full, again, they have plenty of time to use the full playbook, including a run here, should they choose to do that and still kill the clock. I enjoy Bell in the backfield. <laughs> First and goal on Stafford. Looking to Johnson, who is looking for a flag, which comes in from the back judge. And that'll be against Taylor, which will move the ball half the distance to the goal line. I, I, I love Ike one Taylor. Rabbit. Yeah, I love Ike Taylor. Pass interference, number 24, defense. Foul of Curry in the end zone. First down to one yard line. You know, I love Ike Taylor, obviously, but as Laura said in the pregame, the fact that he was going to be all over him one-on-one, -on -one, you got to rethink that one. This guy is just too good, and and, and I, Ike Taylor's doing as good a job as you can do. That's pretty good coverage, obviously, got called there. This is heavy duty, having to go one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Make the handoff. Well, that's a dangerous throw there by Stafford. It was all balanced, half his body turned in the wrong direction. And William Gay in coverage of Jeremy Ross, second down and goal. Two things you don't want to do on the goal line, turn your back to the defense and throw flat over the middle of the field. They broke both those rules. Could have been dangerous. So on that note for Stafford, first game in his career, he's thrown for over 300 yards in the first half. Well, interesting. You got Reggie Bush and Calvin Johnson on the same side of the field. Yeah, Pittsburgh said, I don't like that. Three hundred passing yards plus today for the Lions in the half. And let's remember, it didn't start out well in that first quarter. It's darn near in a quarter and a half. What a great game. Look at this. And that's after being held. You know, in the, the pregame show, I had a chance. I was fortunate to be a guy around a guy, Randy Moss, and a lot of comparisons on these two. Clearly both huge impact. Calvin Johnson probably a little more physical than Randy. Randy had that great ability to get that height off a dead run, but this guy, notwithstanding longevity right now, still got a little ways to go, is going to be thought of as among the greats in this game if he can survive a few more years. All right, we got the same thing going here. We got Reggie Bush and Calvin Johnson on the same side. Maybe Reggie underneath with Calvin over the top. Second down and goal. Boy, you got to wonder, where in the world is that ball going? That is the second time a Steeler has just plain dropped the ball, and once more, it's Ike Taylor. And it's just like we said, take Calvin over the top, but there again, Ike Taylor's been at it a long time. He knew exactly what they were going to do. He beat Reggie Bush to the punch. Third down. 
Stafford has thrown for 267 yards in this quarter. You can see the help they're putting over the top on this side. You got Chris Durham one on one with no help on the back side. That one batted down by Cameron Hayward, defensive lineman who dropped back into coverage. So down at the one yard line, and the Lions will attempt a field goal, and they are lucky to have a field goal try. Yeah, they went to. to, to Joseph Fourier, big 6'8 tight end out of UCLA. They take a lot of shots to him down in the end zone. They needed to keep it up there. Let him take off the rim. That the flat ball is not his kind of ball. 19 yard field goal tried by Akers. And it is good. Well, the Lions don't get seven, but they get three. They scored 10 points in a little more than two minutes to end this first half. Four seconds remain, and Detroit with a 27-20 lead. Let's go back to the fact that Pittsburgh had a chance to close out the half, won a three and out, took off only 30 seconds off the sure. clock, gave Detroit that time. They can be frustrated they didn't come away with seven, but all in all, a very well-orchestrated end to the half. And this was it, and it was not only 31 seconds long, it was an ugly 31 seconds. A couple of penalties. Play, and I think a lot of Steeler fans are watching and they're asking a question. How can you look so good on offense and you're running no huddle? Your first three possessions, you score 17 points. And then virtually an entire quarter goes by and you can't even get a first down. Well, let's give credit to the other side. Those guys get paid too. Detroit adapted. Gunther Cunningham, the defensive coordinator, started bringing no and bringing pressure to the no huddle. They went a couple three and outs. The offense responded, and when they didn't with the fumble to Reggie Bush, the defense stepped back in and responded again. So you got to give the Detroit Lions a lot of credit for emotionally responding to all of the things that happened to them in that first quarter. Zone and one more snap of the football for the Steelers before we'll take a break for the intermission. That's going to be an interesting second half, Tom, because the Steelers, all in all, if you'd have said coming in, don't obviously can't say what the circumstances were, that it would be a seven-point game going into the half. For a three and six football team, you'd say, okay, I'll take that. I can feel pretty good about that. But they're in a tough situation. Looks so good early. And then now they're going to have to do a lot to respond to this emotionally. It's going to test Mike Tomlin, the maturity of his team. A record-setting performance by an offense against his Steeler defense. Almost 400 yards of offense. Let's go to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles for the Visa Halftime. team all season long just go to itunes.com slash nfl well obviously detroit coming back from a 14 nothing deficit finishing with a flurry so you go to halftime coach billick with a seven point lead and what about for both teams well, pittsburgh's got to recrack the code on third down they started out three for three but they're over on the last five they're not running the ball hardly at all. They've got to get back to that. I know that's been a struggle for them to try to keep balance now that we had an even up game. And Detroit, as long as you don't turn the ball over, remember it was a, a turnover late that almost led to more points than they're willing to give up. As long as Matthew Stafford doesn't throw the ball down the field arbitrarily and come away with a turnover, they ought to hold up pretty good. Steelers will get the football to begin the second half. Matthew Stafford, 16 of 30, 327 yards, couple of touchdowns. Ben Roethlisberger started red hot. First two drives, touchdown drives for the Steelers. Hit on 15 of 23 with a couple of touchdowns. So the return.
return is brought up to the 18-yard line. These two teams combining for better than 600 yards of offense. That's the most in one half of any game in the NFL this year. Talked about Stafford going over 300 yards in the first half, first time in his career. And the Stars certainly out. Calvin Johnson, Antonio Brown, each with better than 100 receiving yards and a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, the scary thing is Calvin Johnson's on a better pace right now than he was in that Dallas-Detroit game that we had where he just exploded for better than 300 yards. Steelers began the game in a no huddle. And on their first two drives, they went down the field and capped it off with scoring strikes to Brown. First down here. They pitch it to Le'Veon Bell up to the 21. And Laura Oakman, bring us up to date on what happened at halftime. Tom, I asked Mike Tomlin, what did the Lions' defense do to slow down that fast-paced offense? He said, it wasn't them. It was simply us and our execution or lack of it. I asked if we'll be seeing a lot of no huddle right now, which we are about to. He said, we're going to mix it in, but we will control the pace defensively. He talked a lot to Ike Taylor. I asked him about that conversation. He said, I'm not worried about Ike Taylor's mental health. I said, are you, will you be giving him a little more help in the second half? He said, we will keep doing exactly what we're doing, but we will do it better. Tom, I'll have the Lions in a moment. All right. Thank you very much, Lon. They hand it off to Bell. And he's brought for a one-yard loss behind the line of scrimmage. Don Kerry coming up from the safety spot. Had help from Willie Young. Third down and eight. Taylor's trying to get a spark into this team to begin this second half. They're only down by seven. And Roethlisberger delivers, and it is caught. That is a catch. Made by Jericho Cotchery, his first catch of the afternoon, and that was in traffic. Yeah, Lewis Delmas is all over this. I thought Lewis Delmas came out of this. And it is challenged on the far side by Jim Schwartz of the Lions. Steelers tried to hurry up, snap the football before you could challenge it. But that flag had hit the ground. Of a completed pass is being challenged by Detroit. I don't know if they saw anything up in the booth, but this is a pretty good challenge because of what's at stake. Put Pittsburgh on a three and out in this first series if they can overrule it. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Challenge on the field. Ruled a completed pass. Jim Schwartz doesn't buy it. After reviewing the play, the pass is incomplete. The ball hit the ground. The receiver was going to the ground. Did not maintain control before it touched the ground. Now it's now. fourth down on the 20-yard line. Now we know to why Jim, Jim Schwartz was smiling. And it looks like he loses control of the ball. And it's going to be cradled back in. But right there, you can't use the ground to control the ball. That's a good call. I'm not sure whether Jim Schwartz was just going on what Lewis Delmas told him or whether it was a well-calculated challenge, because sometimes you got to make those challenges blind. Three out of four successfully on challenges this season is Jim Schwartz, so it'll be three and out on the Steelers' opening possession here in the second half. Matt McBriar has had a very, very difficult day. His last two shanked, putting Detroit in great field position. Needs a big one here, and he delivers a big one here. Wow. All the way inside the 10, playing it off a of bounce is Spurlock, and covered beautifully by the Steelers. So McBriar able to step up there. 70-yard punt. Watch tomorrow, the battle against the horsemen may have been won, but the war is just beginning. Critics agree Sleepy Hollow is one of the scariest, funniest, most, most electrifying hours on TV. Don't miss all new episodes tomorrow at 9, 8 Central on Fox. Delivered flaws. That's well. It has been baby step. It's, yeah, it has. We're getting there. <laughs> you know, reading is rudimentary, but for me, it's prerequisite now. I'm very proud of it. 
The Lions get the ball to begin. Their first shot at it here in the second half. Already with a seven-point lead. Reggie Bush back in the lineup to begin the second half. For those of you that were not with us, Bush had a big fumble in the first half. And Joy Bell became a huge part of their offense. Well, I got to come back to this punt because I kind of beat the guy up for the shanks. He booms this. You talk about a change of field position from back on your 18, pushing this thing all the way back darn near onto the goal line. It's all about field position. Hunter's a big part of it. He's had a tough day, but he rebounded very, very well. Eight of two on first down, second and eight. And they're on 14. Well, for Third down and eight. Well, we heard from Mike Tomlin. Laura, what about Jim Schwartz? Jim Schwartz, as good as the Lions look going into the half, he was not feeling it, saying this thing is far from over. That's what he told his team in the locker room. He said he was concerned about the field conditions in the second half if the weather turns as it's supposed to. We're seeing Reggie Bush now, Tom, but if we see a lot more of Joyce Bell, a slower, softer field would make a little more sense for Bell. So as the weather turns, we may see him a lot more than Reggie. All right, Lord, thank you. Third down and eight. Bell is in the backfield. And Stanford works out of the shotgun. <laughs> Batted down at the line of scrimmage, so a good start on defense for these Pittsburgh Steelers. Big Cameron Hayward, who has recorded a sack in back-to-back -back games. Former number one pick out of Ohio State delivering the pressure there. Yeah, and they just have a twist. You can see coming off the left side here, Worlds goes inside, then shows up on the outside. Well-timed, you know, as we said many times, Tom, it's not how many sacks you get, but when you get them, that wasn't a sack. It clearly had affected the throw. They were the one who tipped the ball. It was Worlds who had put the hit on Stanford as he turned it loose. Good punt here. Antonio Brown up to the 34-yard line. And now flags litter the field. As some jawing goes on between the two teams after that punt return. Well, the officials want to make sure they keep this under control, second half. A desperate three and six Pittsburgh Steeler team. There is no foul on the play for unnecessary roughness. First down, Pittsburgh. And a Detroit Lion team that has struggled in this regard to a degree. Just a little back and forth. And this is a good, uh, oh, a little acting going on there. A little acting. Well, Ashley Palmer, uh, not seeing a lot of action today because of three wide alignment of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but almost had a big impact on that previous play. Steelers down seven with the football. Play action, man. Roethlisberger under throws as a penalty flag comes down. And they are going to get a Lion defender, it looks like, once more for a late hit. That's roughing the passer as we're having audio problems with a microphone worn by Walt Anderson. I believe it was number 99, C.J. Bosley, who wrapped up Roethlisberger and threw him to the deck long after he had thrown the football. Well, you see, he comes in here late. DeAndre Levy kind of hits him, and then just that last little shoulder, I think, is what got him. If he hadn't have leaned into it with the shoulder, I think he'd have been fine. Boy, that was Mosley, who is in the game right now for Indomitian Sue. Remember now, as Sue now is checked back into the game. So that's a good sign for the Lions. He was shaken up, you may remember, in the final minutes of the first half. Should have been intercepted by Levy, who has five on the year. Tied for the most in the NFL. How many interceptions? have been dropped by both teams in this game today. Well, you can see Levy right here. These quick slants were lethal in the first quarter. 
So Levy says, you know, get me once, shame on you. Get me twice, shame on me. No Emmanuel Sanders the rest of the way, we're told, for the Steelers out with an injured foot. And there's an errant throw with an eye on the man who replaces Sanders. Rookie Marcus Wheaton, third down and ten. Well, Laura talked about the concern of both teams. How would the turf hold up in the second half? We're seeing a little bit of it. Receivers coming out of the breaks just a little bit more slowly. Ben Roethlisberger a little off with the throws to start. We saw how the Steeler offense has gone stone cold. After getting 20 quick points in this game. a dangerous throw and once more Levy in coverage on Heath Miller and Roethlisberger wanting a flag now that's more out of desperation than anything else that's good coverage by Levy he was all over Heath Miller you know the old saying is the tight ends never covered because it's always going to be tight coverage on the big man inside so the quarterbacks have to put it up and Levy was all over it Brian, a big punt a moment ago, looking to pin him inside the 20 here. A fair catch made by Spurlock at the 12. So a lot of offense in the first half. Slow to get it started here in the second. Stafford trying to change that. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the new 2014 Dodge Durango. 27-20, Detroit leading Pittsburgh. 12 minutes to play here in the third quarter. And a tough start to spot a drive for Detroit. Second time, that's been the story here in the third quarter. Let's see Detroit, they get a two tight end alignment here. I'd like to see them get the run cranked up just a little bit here at this stage of the game. They're going to throw it on first hand. And Durham just playing drop. Well, tonight, join Jay and Dan on Fox Sports Live. All the scores and highlights for the full day around the NFL. Also, update the BCS rankings in college football and results from the first week of college basketball. Fox Sports Live tonight, 11 Eastern, only on Fox Sports One. You'll find Fox Sports One on your provider. Go to FoxSportsOne.com. 29 drop pass for Matthew Stafford this season. The Lions had the most dropped passes in the NFL. Reggie Bush, a first down, or second down carry for a yard. So to bring up third down and nine. And that's what Laura was referring to with Reggie Bush, who obviously is a good, a good back in this situation. But Joy Bell, a little bit more of the plotter, if indeed the turf is a little loose, the jump cut, the subtlety of Reggie Bush. Joy Bell might be a more effective run back on first and second down than Reggie Bush right now. Bill averaging five yards per carry today, and he has three receptions for 48 yards. It's been a very quiet day for Reggie Bush. Bush in the slot again. Fast rush, and Stanford is at a safety. We are waiting. Apparently, he was tackled inside the one-yard line. Jason Worlds spinning out right here and then comes around the edge. Do they mark that as a forward progress? He tries to step out of it. Yeah, he was down. The ball was down. It must be the one-inch line. Stafford doing a nice job of not letting the ball break the plane as he goes back into it. So the reward, punter gets to punt with his foot on the back end line. Got Antonio Brown standing right at midfield. Sam Martin, the rookie out of Appalachian State, gets rid of it quickly. And Brown at the 45, a fair catch. So in the first half of this game, Detroit put up more offensive yards against a Steeler team than we have seen going all the way back to 2007. Lions almost 400 yards of offense. The Steelers. 
right around 230, but Brian, so much of that was done those first two drives. Here they are, however, seven points down. It feels like they're a lot further behind. They're a touchdown away from knocking this thing up. Yeah, and they're both playing a little tight right now. Detroit, I talked about, can't make the big mistake, and, and Matthew Stafford being maybe a little overly careful. And for Pittsburgh, they got to get that rhythm going again. I don't know whether the no huddle is the way to do it or whether they should start huddling more to try to create some rhythm because right now it's not working for them, particularly on third down. That is contrary, and that is his first catch of the game. He's banged out of bounds. Crowd is looking for a late hit on Lewis Delmasse. No flag thrown. And depending on the spot, he looks to be about a maybe a yard short of a first down. They're staying with the no huddle. They're totally committed to it, thinking that's the way to calm down the Detroit defense. He's pitching to Le'Veon Bell, and he just pulls his way to the first down, ran right through Houston. was the Antonio Brown show when this one got underway. First quarter, 105 receiving yards and a couple of touchdowns, and what a job the Lions have done on him since. Yeah, well, like I always say, give the other guys credit, too. I'm sure, sure. Jim Schwartz went to Gunther Cunningham and said, you know what, maybe we ought to do something to stop that number 84. <laughs> Steelers at the Detroit 34-yard line, a first down. And Roethlisberger to throw it. And there is Antonio Brown. And he's inside the 15, down to the 13. Well, Chris Houston, up here on top of him, had him, had help over the top. He had no reason to drop off that way. Safety was working over the top. He could have been a little more aggressive. You played that far off on Tony O'Brown, give him a chance to catch it and turn up and square up on you. He's going to do some damage. 21-yard gain, they spotted at the 13, and Sue comes to the sideline. All day to throw it. Now Roethlisberger rolling to the right, and he'll keep it himself, and that's a good run on first down. Good coverage back in that secondary. Now when you go no back and spread it out, you're just counting on someone to shake loose. Quarterbacks like that give me more options. He didn't have a lot of options there. It took him a while, but he still got positive yards running out of bounds. That is a seven-yard run, which gives the Steelers 23 rushing yards in the game today. When did you think you'd ever see it? rushing yards, three of their last four. They dump it off to Bell. That's a nice play made by Levy. And Bell able to get back to the line of scrimmage. You know, you look at the Steelers. So far this year, they're throwing the ball almost 64% of the time. This was earlier today before the game, but both players initially arrived at the stadium. And Dominican Sue. Ben Roethlisberger, and so far, that's their only meeting today. And that's just fine with Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> yes, it would be. Third down and four. Catch, and we wait on the decision. It is spotted inside the one on the reception by Le'Veon Bell. They're going to hurry up and not allow the Lions to bring in some big bodies up against the goal line. Let's see if Big Ben goes over the top. Looked like Andre Fluellen came over the top. Encroachment, number 96, defense. Half the distance to the goal, still first down. And now the Steelers Number will do the substituting. As they're going to bring in Mike Adams, he's a second-year tackle who lost his starting job, but every time they run the ball, they've been bringing Adams in as an extra tight end slash offensive lineman. He is eligible. Yeah, he's basically become 
a tight end, and they actually send him out on routes. Bell does not get there. Oh, he took a shot right at the one-yard line. A whole fleet of lines stuffed up in there. You can see here, it's all about beating the man across from me to the punch. And clearly Detroit did that. Said it many, many times. Goal line defense is about selling out to whatever the call dictates. You think it's run, sell out to the run. You think it might be a pass, you got to be more passive. You got to make that decision with your call. And hit delivered by Steven Tullin. After about a yard loss. And Walthusberger overthrows a wide open David Paulson in the back of the end zone. Third and goal. Well, Detroit sold out to the run, just like I said. You got to sell out to one or the other. They sold out to stop the run. Watch the play fake. This guy's on the right side, slips out, slips out, fights his way up. There's nobody there because everybody committed to the run. That same big package. He planted that left foot in the four-yard line, and the Steelers' first and goal from inside the one have failed on three tries, and what do you do now if you're Mike Tomlin? Mike Tomlin's going to go for it. He's three and six. He's down on the goal line at home. Nope, changing his mind. Initially, he told his guys to stay in. Now he's changing his mind, decided to go for three points. Well, where are the days of Steeler power football? Well, they haven't been in the top third of the league in rushing since 2007. 21-yard field goal attempt by Sweezy, and it is good. Pushing and shoving going on. Gilbert and Sue, but the field goal makes it. A four-point game with 5.14 to play in the third from Heinz Field. Steelers within four, although they have had missed opportunities today. Brian Billick, three trips inside the red zone, three field goals they've come away with. Well, and you talk about the Steelers' running game and how it's been missing really since 2007 was the last time they were in the top top third of the league in rushing. That also it was back in 2007. That also happens to be Ben Roethlisberger's best year with 32 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. So the two are related. But it brings up the old question, Brian. Are you talking about the chicken or the egg? I mean, it's hard to run the ball when you're passing 64% of the time. How good can your running game be? Taking a knee is Spurlock in the end zone. Frustration for the Steelers. They missed the chance to have a lead in this one, but they're only down four. Steelers three shots from the one yard line. Total sellout by the Detroit Lions, stuffing the first one. Sold out for the run on the second, almost cost them. Miss Q, and then a total sellout here on the third one, stuffing the Pittsburgh Steelers, making them settle for a field goal after having first and goal on the one yard line. So now Detroit gets a football. 5.14 to play in the third. Detroit 27, the Steelers 23. Joy Bell takes a handoff. Cuts it back to the inside, and that'll be a gain of seven on first down for Bell, who now has seven carries for 37 yards. He also has three catches for 48 more yards. Reggie Bush, obviously a big part of this offense, but I like what they're doing with Joyke Bell, a little more of a straight downhill runner. Good receiver out of the backfield, so they can still do the things they do with Reggie, but I think Joyke Bell better fits this situation and this turf right now. Play fake to Bell, and Stafford finds a wide open Ross across the middle. Ross only one reception the entire year. Right now, he's in there getting valuable playing time. Yeah, Matthew Stafford giving that Farvesque side throw, that little sidearm action on the crossing route. Get a good run by Joyk Bell. Play action fake and waggle out of it on the next play. Good one-two combination. 
19-yard gain. First down from their own 45. Moving Troy Palomalo all over the place here, trying to disrupt the Detroit Lions. A gain of three on first down by Bell, wrapped up by Jarvis Jones. Well, with some of the other things going on around the NFL, the Jets are being hammered by the Buffalo Bills. Cincinnati at last check had a 11-point lead over Cleveland. That's a big one inside the AFC North. Baltimore is leading. They have just resumed that game in Chicago. And they have just completed the first quarter after a lengthy weather delay in the Windy City and Soldier Field. Ravens leading 10-0. Sitting down and making the reception is Durham. And that is a first down to the 41-yard line. They are chewing up this Steelers secondary. 345 passing yards now for the Lions. And they're doing it by rotating now different personnel groups. They're almost exclusively three wides to start. Now they get into two tight ends. We've seen Joyke Bell and Reggie Bush in the backfield. They're back to a two tight end alignment here. They're changing it up on the Steelers. The gain of almost 10 on first down, and we check in with Laura Oakman. Well, for anyone who is wondering about Reggie Bush and his participation or his lack of it, I have asked. It definitely is not his help. I've been told that it is part two fumbles and part these field conditions, which as the day goes, the field is definitely getting softer. And as Brian said, that it's uh, that Joyke Bell is definitely a little bit more, uh, it's more advantageous to have him. Tom. Yeah, and they're trying to protect him, but you're not going to give up on Reggie Bush just because he pumped the ball. Now, Joy Bell is down. There's no question that obviously he has to come in now. And like we said, this circumstance maybe fits Joy Bell. Hopefully he'll be back. But Reggie Bush still can impact this game, and I don't think Jim Schwartz is going to give up on him just because he had an unfortunate fumble. Well, but Brian, you know, oftentimes we talk about differences a head coach can make and decisions you make it inside of a game. And, and I would imagine there is credit to be given to Jim Schwartz realizing weather conditions, one player maybe not on top of his game. We're going to go ahead and go with somebody else, although that guy now wobbly coming off the field. Let's check in quickly with Kurt Menefee back in Los Angeles. All right, the Philadelphia Eagles have been all over the Redskins, up 24 to nothing in the third in the fourth quarter. Now, well, RG3 trying to do the comeback thing with a little help from Darrell Young, 62-yard reception. They added a two-point conversion. It's now 24 to 8 in the fourth. Tom Bryan and Laura. All right, Kurt, thank you very much. Well, the Eagles trying to take sole possession of that NFC East as Bush on a second down and less than a yard picks up a first down to the 29. Well, pick your poison has been a story. Johnson or Bush. When one is taken away, the other makes you pay. And that's the key to the Detroit Lions this year compared to years past. There hasn't been that option. Take away Calvin Johnson. There wasn't much else they could go to. But now they've got a lot of other options. That balance that we're talking about has been the key. throw it on first down forever to throw it crossing pattern bush and that'll be a gain of close to six yards on first down raining harder now than at any point during the day did you see matthew stafford telling bush where to go <laughs> that was schoolyard football now just say hey you know what go to the trash can and turn left because that looks like it's going to be open. You know, to finish your point, Tom, about Reggie Bush, that's a big difference, too, because Reggie Bush is now at a point in his career where he's comfortable with, okay, look, if you think Joyke Bell's the better way to go here, I'm fine with that. I'm all about the team. They play this drive under a minute to play in the third quarter. It's a four-point game. Maybe a yard wrapped up by Ziggy Hood getting playing time and a lot of it today. Steelers, if you're just joining us, without Brett Kiesel due to a foot injury, without Lamar Woodley, who leads the team in sacks, he's out with a calf injury. So Ziggy Hood and the rookie Jarvis Jones getting a lot of playing time as we have played three quarters here at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. 
A critical third down upcoming for Pittsburgh defensively. Trying to limit Detroit to a field goal try and keep it in a one-score game. End of three, 27-23 Detroit. You're watching the NFL on Fox. I was alert early today, Brian, that there was even worse weather coming from the west. Wind expected to crank up to 20 miles per hour here on the opening play of the fourth quarter. A four-point Detroit lead, third down and three for the Lions from the Steeler, 22-yard line. Hey, Bush on the outside. And a quarterback keeper. And Stafford a first down and slides to the 15-yard line. How about that? What a great call. What a great call by Scott Linehan, I tell you what, you don't expect that. Maybe inside the 10 of the 5, you see those quarterback draws all the time. I imagine there was a check in there. If the number count wasn't right, he could get out of it. But that was clearly called all the way. Almost got, really probably should have got a bit of a face mask there, too. First down at the 15-yard line. 10th play of this drive. Closing in on six minutes during it. And they give it to Bush with Bell still on the sideline. And he's to the 10-yard line, a five-yard pickup on first down for Reggie Bush. Working on that ankle, taping it up for Joyke Bell, and he's screaming and yelling, wanting back in that football game. Again, we point out how lethal Charles John, excuse me, Calvin Johnson is in the red zone. But last time they took a bunch of vertical shots down here, I can see him maybe, you can see the, the defense here a little soft. Maybe dropping their little trap for drawing here. That's what they do. They give it to Bush. And he lost his foot in trying to cut it back to the inside. That'll be the loss of the yard. So once more, a big third down. Well, and you can see Reggie Bush because of the footing. Typically Reggie Bush, see that little jump cut he likes to do? Nice job. Had he been able to hold a little bit of footing, you can see back into here now there was going to be an alley, but the footing just wasn't going to allow it. The Riddick, number 41, the rookie out of Notre Dame, checks into the backfield. Riddick has good hands as well as Bush and Joyke Bell. And they split Riddick out far to the left. Stack behind Durham. Look one way, throw the other way, and it's incomplete. Looking for Calvin Johnson in the back of the end zone, and Ryan Clark in his 12th year out of LSU. There to break it up. Yeah, and you can see right here, we talk about two on one. Clark all over the top, and even Mike Taylor falling back underneath once he saw where the ball was going to go. That's the way you got to play Calvin Johnson. Two bodies on one. This will be a 27-yard field goal try by Akers. Trying to extend the lead to seven. And they fake it. And the ball is on the ground. And the Steelers, the first man there was Clark. And you have to wonder about the decision there by the Lions. Rather than taking the sure three and a seven-point lead, they fake the field goal with the rookie Sam Martin. Oh, my goodness. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by T-Mobile, Unleashed, by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL, and by Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live Moss. Well, Cameron Haywood and Steve McClendon, I tell you what, they came up with the big play. It, it's a foolish call if it doesn't work, obviously. If it works, it's brilliant. But now, at the very least, you got the Steelers backed up inside the five. So from the three-yard line, the Steelers down by four, obviously needing a touchdown to take the lead. But almost an entire quarter to play, they have almost an entire field to go. Here you're going to 
see him wadded up on the inside. Hayward and McClendon, they're just counting on figuring they're not going to do this down here. The ball clearly comes out. Recovery. Clark jumps all over it. Gutty call, you know, the conventional thinking says, kick the field goal, go up by seven. But again, if they can hold here, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm being a coach now, I'm being a little sensitive. You know, you make the right decision, you're brilliant. If you don't, you're the village idiot. Back-to-back -back running tries and back-to-back -back zero success. I mean, Tullock seems to be the man on the spot every time the Steelers even think about running the ball. The first guy there, more often than not, has been Stephen Tullock. Now they've been in their jumbo package, their extra tight end, their tight end being the big Mike Adams from Ohio State, being that tight end with the big package. Now they've got the receivers back in, going to spread it out a little bit. Going to be a little dicey for... Ben Roethlisberger here. Got to care if you don't turn the ball over. Got a long way to go to third down for your 4-12. Roethlisberger out of his own end zone. Four-man rush all day to throw, and he finds Antonio Brown, and they convert on third down and nine. Hey, when they do throw it, this offensive line, revamped offensive line, is held up pretty well. Only right. one sack today. Nice job climbing the pocket. You trust your veteran quarterback. Lewis Delvin saw it, was closed on it, just quite couldn't get there quick enough. They've got Wimper playing for the injured Ramon Foster over at left guard. Fernando Velasco, of course, has replaced Marquise Pouncey. That's Miller, and that'll be a gain of close to nine. Beach in the young left tackle. DeCastro, the right guard in his second year, and Marcus Gilbert in his third year. They have revamped that offensive line. They have work to do. Primarily good health in that offensive line. We'll commit a lot of draft choices you know, in doing that. And it's going to be a good offensive line once they get those healthy people back. Le'Veon Bell, and that'll be a first down up to the 35-yard line. Closing in on 10 minutes to go in Pittsburgh. The Steelers at three and six. They won three of their last five after beginning the year 0 and 4. They feel like a strong ending to this season with a lot of help here, a lot of help there, and you never know where they end up. Well, and of course, the Lions are sitting atop the division lead. You got to figure Kansas City and Denver are going to take that division plus one of the wild cards. So there's yeah. a lot of folks scrambling for that sixth wild card spot. Heath Miller, a first down to the Lions, 44-yard line. Classic Ben Roethlisberger. Climbed the pocket all but awkwardly. He always looks like he's barely get there. Fights off pressure around him and delivers the ball down the field. Always keeps that vision down the field. Gain of 21 you 21 yards. 9-12 to go from Hines Field. And the Steelers on the move. just has no chance every time they hand him the ball. Well, that interior of the defensive line, and they're rotating them through pretty good here, but whether it's Fairley or whether it's Sue, Fluellen, Mosley, they're rolling them all through there, keeping them fresh, and they're just beating this offensive line to the punch when it comes to the running game. At that time, it was a fourth-round pick out of South Carolina, Devin Taylor. Gunther Cunningham, very excited about his future. With Ziggy Anson not playing, they love the fact that Devin Taylor, like you said, a fourth-round pick, huge, 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, Walfelsberger looking down the sideline and underthrown. Closing quickly was Rasheed Mathis. The intended target, Antonio Brown, it brings up third down and 12 for the Steelers. Yeah, ben just needed to get that one up just a little bit earlier. Very quiet offensively for both teams in this second half. 
after better than 600 yards of offense in the first half, the most in a half this year of every NFL game. Roethlisberger rolling, 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 and here he comes. Lowers his shoulder. He's about a yard short of a first down. Took on Don Kerry. You're down by four. Are you going for it here if you're Mike Tomlin? Yeah, and what does Pittsburgh do here? We've already seen them go for a fourth down. He's clearly short of it. Again, you're talking about a three and six Pittsburgh team. In this condition, a little bit lengthy for a field goal. Looks like they're going for it. And from here, it would be roughly about a 53-yard field goal. Okay. Sweezum's long for the year is 48. I'm going to turn this on you now. You're down the goal line. You had three shots on the one-yard line. Couldn't get in. What are you going to call here? I'm going to put this on you. I'm tired of coaching. You coach when you come back. Well, I know we're going. i tell you that. <laughs> and we're going to break. 7.30 to go. You're down by four. A fourth down, and the Steelers are going for it. Yeah, they've tried these shallow crossing routes, whether it's the tight end. They got their big people in. Well, the Steelers in the game are averaging 1.7 yard per, per rush. They're going to pass it. And they are going to get it on the reception by Bell. That was an easy throw for Ben Roethlisberger and the rookie out of Michigan State, the reception. We're winding down to seven minutes to go. That was an easy throw, but not an easy catch. He did a nice job of pulling that down, keeping his balance to get the first down. Well, now the Steelers, even though they are not huddling up, they are in no hurry to snap the football as we're now under seven minutes. Field and he breaks a couple of tackles and he has another first down to the Detroit 20-yard line. And you bring up a good point, Tom. Just because you know huddle doesn't mean it has to be fast-paced. You can suck some clock down even in the no huddle. Ben Roethlisberger, a master at this, as veteran as he is, to take whatever time he wants off the clock. Indeed, that becomes a priority. But he's looking up at that play clock. And they were ready with 25 seconds left, and now it's down under 10. Well, that's a dangerous throw right there. You saw DeAndre Levy. He was maybe a step late from what would have been his sixth interception of the year, Houston in coverage. Well, they bring pressure from one side. DeAndre Levy knows he can step out under that hot throw. Almost had one earlier in the game that yep. really hit him right in the chest. Empty backfield on second down and 10. 30 times Rosslesberger in his career since he was a number one pick out of Miami of Ohio has led his team from behind in the fourth quarter to win a game. Catch by Cotterie. Inside the 10. Cotterie stumbling it inside the five and down to the two-yard line. It's first and goal for the Steelers. I haven't had Kotri's name but one time on what ended up being a non-catch earlier in the game. Now he shows up with that veteran experience. Looked like Antonio Brown there changing direction and getting back to the outside. This actually suits the Steelers. I mean, you want the touchdown, don't get me wrong, and they've been here before and been denied. But this actually gives them a chance, if they can score a touchdown, to draw some more clock down. And now the Lions are the ones that are going to spend a timeout. It's their first time out here in the second half, stopping the clock with 5.39 to play. Take a look at this, Brian. You look at the NFL this year, over two-thirds of the games that have been played have been decided or been within seven points by the time you arrived in the fourth quarter. That is an all-time NFL record. Roethlisberger on this drive on the big third and 12, converting. The carry on third down and 10, got nine, they went for it. The completion to Le'Veon Bell. And now the pass completion to Contrary to get it inside the two. Let's remember the sequence last time they were here. It was run, 
play action fake and run defensively now what do you make your calls are they going to cross you up and throw on the first run first play or are they going to indeed run it defense has to sell out one or the other on the goal line they've got Dwyer in the backfield this time rather than Le'Veon Bell and that jumbo package in there and they're going to throw it and that is bobbled and incomplete Normally the sure-handed Antonio Brown could not find the handle of his second down and goal for the Steelers. And that's just what I'm talking about in the play calling down here. You can't think of it within an isolated, what do I want to do right now? What did we do before? What did Detroit do to make the call? How am I going to counter that? Now, you've thrown it on first down, you come back with a second down run or another play action fake. It's that constant chess match between Gunther Cunningham and Todd Haley. 15th play of the drive, the drive which began from their own three-yard line after a fake field goal attempt. Flag in the end zone. The intended receiver, contrary, he may have been held in the back of the end zone. Well, when a play takes that long, typically that's going to happen down in here in the shadow of the goal line. That's a long time to literally and figuratively hold out a receiver. Pass interference, number 31, defense. The foul card in the end zone. First down at the one yard line. All right, now, Brian, you want to talk number about deja vu all over again. You just talked about the pattern where you were. Right here, Rashid Mathis. You can see how long this tape play takes. He cuts him off, cuts him off, and yeah, he's he's definitely pulling on the jersey there, and then had to peel off in behind it, but that was holding all the way. It was a penalty which put the ball at the one yard line. The last time the Steelers could not punch it in, and that was that sequence you talked about. Now they do it again. Right, so you ran it the first time you were first and goal. You threw it play action. The second time you were first and goal, what are you going to do here? They said they run in the eye formation, and they're going to give it to Jonathan Dwyer. And very close to that goal line. He didn't have far to go, but it looks like he did not make it. It'll bring up second down and goal. As we watch the clock talk inside the 515 mark. Three possessions in the red zone for the Steelers today, and they've come away with field goals. Well, last time in this situation was the play action fake. The receiver was wide open at the back of the end zone, couldn't hit it. I think you're going to see a run here. This is a touchdown. Will Johnson, the fullback, only his fourth catch of the year, his first touchdown of the year. And the Steelers a point after away from a three-point lead. Well, the Detroit Lions were thinking run two. You can see they're all so done in here. And now he just gets two cleaner release. Both the tight end and the back got two cleaner release. Again, I, it sounds like a broken record, but goal line defense, you've got to sell out to whatever call you make and hope you're right. A drive which began from their own three-yard line. 16 plays, chewing up better than eight minutes. And now the pressure squarely falls on the NFC North leading Lions. Can they tie it or win it? This game is sponsored by Rise, Son of Rome, exclusively on Xbox One. What an extraordinary drive by Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Converting on a third down and 12. And remember, all of that on the heels of the fake field goal by Jim Schwartz. Yeah, and they're going to ask Jim Schwartz, you know, should you have rethought that? Yeah, if I knew they were going to go 98 yards and score a touchdown, yeah, I certainly wouldn't have made that call. Spurlock out of his own end zone, and he will not reach the 20. Almost to the 20. Stafford trying to answer the touchdown pass to Johnson with the Lions down three. Been an extraordinary swing of momentum. One side, the other side, back the other way, and now the Steelers with a three-point lead, 440 to go. Stafford and the Lions with a football from their own 20. Through the hands.
to Theo Riddick. For the injury to Troy Bell. Riddick's in the game. They went for it, of course, on fourth down. Steelers recovered. Started the drive from their own three. And marched 97 yards. And certainly, Jim Schwartz will be asked about that after the game, unless his Lions can rally. It would have made it 30 to 23 in favor of Detroit had they taken the field goal. And a drop. That's Ross. Let's check in with Joel Platt back in Los Angeles. Thanks, Tom. In Philadelphia, RG3 and the Redskins mounting a comeback in the fourth quarter. Aldrich Robinson, a 41-yard TD catch. The two-point conversion was good. It's the two-minute drill, eight-point game in Philly. Tom. Huge third down for the Lions. Four first downs this entire half for Detroit. 65 total Ooh. yards after piling up nearly 14 or 400 in the first half. Looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. Will Allen still on his feet inside the 40 and dropped at the 39-yard line. What an unbelievable turn of events in this second half for the Pittsburgh defense. This was the same play that they scored on in the first half, but clearly the defense was up to the task here. Will Allen dropping back underneath the deep crossing route when there was not no defender to be found when they ran it in the first half. They had no part of it. It's almost like they knew it was coming. Now, look, we saw the Lions in a game that they came back with virtually a miracle to beat the Dallas Cowboys. There's still 4-11 left in this game. So by no means is this one over. This has been as Jekyll and Hyde, a first half to a second half. As that catch is made by Miller. Brian, that I can ever remember. Remember, for those of you that weren't with us, the yardage piled up by Matthew Stafford and the Lions in the first half, the most the Steelers have allowed since 2007. And that was done mostly in a quarter and a half. I mean, it was all Pittsburgh in the first quarter, all Detroit in the second quarter. Neither did a whole lot in the third quarter until we saw that 97-yard drive by the Steelers. It's a heck of a game right now. 65 total yards for the Detroit Lions in this second half after almost 400 yards in the first half. Le'Veon Bell spins his way into a first half. Broke the tackle of Levy and Tullock. They were both there. And this is the classic definition of four-minute offense. You think about the old Steelers now. They're going to get in their big package. They're going to get in their jumbo. I'd be surprised if we didn't see the line come in. Mike Adams as the extra tight end. Grind away. Doesn't mean you can't throw the ball, but you're at 321. Grind away, grind away. Certainly you want a touchdown. You're in field goal position. So obviously if you can get that done up by three, it's going to take a touchdown to beat you. When you think of four-minute offense, you think of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here's what we're talking about, Tom. Talk about halftime adjustments. 605 yards total offense combined in the first half and just over 200 for both teams in the second. Well, you know, Brian, you can talk about yards from now till the end of time. The Lions have not scored a point in the second half. They had 27 points all in the first half. In fact, all of them came in the second quarter. So how's that for size? 27 second quarter points. They were shut out in the first quarter and shut out so far, so far, 
here in the second half. And you got to give Mike Tomlin and his crew at three and six. You know, watching Mike Tomlin work on Friday at practice, I admire so much what he does. He was all over that field. He was touching every player on that team, coaching up across the board, probably as much emotionally as tactically, holding this team together one by one on a three and six record. Of course, Dick LeBeau, a lot of credit here at halftime, whatever adjustments he has made thus far. Second down and nine. And it is Miller, one out of bounds, which will stop the clock at the little spot just inside the 20 yard line. So that'll bring up a third down and five. And those are the numbers. Yeah, you just take out that second quarter, it's been all Pittsburgh. Once more, that fake field goal. How large does that loom right now? Had a chance to go up seven. Pump fake to the end zone. Touchdown, Cotchery. Jericho Cotri coming up huge in this second half. He's the one that put him on the one yard line to finish off the last series. And now you're going to see him right here out of the slot. They look for that quick screen to the outside. Both DBs jump all over. Cotri stalking like he's going to block and slips into the back of the end zone. Point after by Sweezum. You have to be here to believe it, and we're here, and I don't know if I still believe that you had one team for 15 minutes of football that did what they did to another team offensively. And that same team has not done a single thing in an entire half of football. And, and look at, you got to give Pittsburgh credit. No Brett Kiesel, no Lamar Woodley. We haven't had Antonio Brown this second half. They're without Ramon Foster, their starting left guard. I mean, they're doing it with some missing pieces. So we gave a great deal of credit to Detroit answering emotionally in that second quarter. You have to give equal credit to the Pittsburgh Steelers fight back in this second half. For Cotri, that is his fifth touchdown in the last three weeks. He had three and one game against New England. And the seven touchdowns overall this year, a new career high for Cotchery. How about Ben Roethlisberger? All the talk this week that he wanted out of Pittsburgh, being reported in some circles that, you know, he was going to demand a trade, did not like what was going on around here. He has vehemently denied that. As have the Steelers, as has Mike Tomlin. It, you know, it's sometimes it's like the classic Don Shula line, two reporters talking to one another. Well, there's one league source talking to another. I think it was more that than anything else. <laughs> Booted through the back of the end zone. But here in the fourth quarter, Roethlisberger, 10 out of 13, two touchdowns, over 100 yards. The gamble. Had a sure three. Roethlisberger takes him 97 yards for a touchdown after the Stafford interception on third down by Will Allen, a big return. Eventually leading to the touchdown pass, Roethlisberger to Contrary. And the Steelers with a 10-point lead. <laughs> well, certainly all the victims in the Philippines urgently need your help. With your support, the American Red Cross is distributing relief items, repairing and rebuilding shelters, providing health care, just clean water, sanitation to all the victims of that terrible typhoon. If you're able, please donate to the Red Cross Disaster Relief today. Visit redcross.org or text typhoon, T-Y-P-H-O-O-N, to 90999 and make a $10 donation. Your help is certainly appreciated, even your prayers. Third down and ten. Is there any one noticeable difference 
from what Dick LeBeau's defense has done here in the second half to what they apparently did not do in the second quarter. Well, it's also subtle in terms of whether you go pressure coverage, that last interception. There again, you get burnt on a play for a touchdown at the end of the half. Calvin Johnson crossing the field. You make the adjustments. You make the call. You recognize it better. You can put a lot of that on coaching. Dick LeBeau, one of the best all time. Stafford looking for a big hit. And that looked like a ball that should have been caught by Ogletree. I mean, that was right on the button. And now down 10 with 2.11 left. You have to go for it. So fourth down and 10 for Stafford and the Lions, who fell behind 14 nothing, fell behind 17 to three, scored 27 points in the second quarter to take a seven point lead into halftime. And it has been the Steelers who have scored 17 unanswered. Stafford will run it, and that's good enough for a first down up to the 34 yard line. 2.03 to go. Well, with the win by the Steelers here, if indeed that holds up, we've, we've learned, as you say, with the Detroit Lions, long way to go. Right now, if I'm not mistaken, Baltimore is leading in Chicago. 17 to 10, it's almost halftime. Yeah, this is not a thing to say on a one o'clock game. Cincinnati having a good win, so Pittsburgh, you know, all but at three and six. Ball start, number 66, offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. And that's what you hold on to as a coach. You know, we're going to play one at a time. We'll see how this thing shakes down. You talked about the AFC picture for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You really are scrambling for one wild card spot, figuring what Detroit, or excuse me, Denver and Kansas City are going to do. Not that they're out of the AFC North battle at all. Well, Chicago has just kicked a field goal in the final seconds of the first half. So the Ravens with a 17 to 10 lead over the Bears. And is that a catch by Durham? No. That will take us to 157 in the two minute warning. Mike Tomlin Steelers have Ward back here in the second half and lead by 10 with less than two to go. 157 to play, 37-27 Steelers. Lions have the football, second down and 15. One timeout remaining. Of course, the Lions have that miracle finish, that six-play 80-yard drive with a minute left, no timeouts on the one-yard plunge by Stafford. But here you're down by a couple of scores. Third down and 15. Well, again, the Bears are down by seven. They've just gone to half after terrible weather today. And you look at what's coming up for the Lions. We'll see them again next week at home against Tampa Bay. They'll have a big one against Green Bay. Go to Philadelphia. You play Baltimore and the Giants. So you got four of your next five at home. And that's what we talked about this game and next week at home against Tampa Bay. They're big games. If you look at that schedule the rest of the way, that uh, it's life in the NFL, particularly in November and December, as you get lining up for that cash, dash for the cash. Incomplete, you know, Brian, when you look at that schedule, a lot of those teams, not necessarily Tampa Bay, but a lot of those other teams, the Giants, the Ravens, we know about Green Bay. All of those two, all those teams are playing for a shot at the playoff. New York and Green Bay by no stretch of the imagination. Philadelphia and that wacky NFC East. Sure. Shows how that's going to finish. Well, for all intents and purposes, 
To have any hope, you got to convert on fourth and 15 with a minute 45 left to play, down 10. And they won't. Ziggy Hood with a sack on Stafford. And the Lions, after back-to-back -back huge wins over the Dallas Cowboys and winning in Chicago for the first time since 2007, will take a step backwards today. Well, just an offensive lineman's worst nightmare. Fourth down, they know it's a pass. Matthew Stafford trying to step out of it. Can't quite pull out of the grasp of Zig Ziggy Hood. You know, we talked about the AFC. The NFC is, is kind of the same place, Tom, in terms of what you've got in San Francisco and Seattle. One of the two is going to win the division. The other is going to be the wild card. So all these teams are scrambling around for that one six seed in the wild card spot. Our game today produced by Bob Stenner, directed by Greg Scopatone. Our technical producer, Bob Muller. Technical director, Dane Crawford. Replay producers, Mark Teitelman. Our associate director, Yvonne Wagner. Our broadcast associate, Jordan Wolf. I'd like to thank up here in the booth, spotter Scott Studley Snyder, our stats crew, Tom Barbary, Eric Norton, Mike Eldridge, and company down in the truck. I got to thank my guy Taylor Jones here. You me, better. He's taking care of me. You better. I'm getting big time. I got a spotter now. Well, I tell you what, you've come a long way in a short amount of time. <laughs> Feels like a short way in a long amount of time. Nice to have Taylor with us this week, and he'll be joining us next week in Detroit as well. well coming up next on Fox, America's Game of the Week. The Packers take on Eli Manning and the Giants. For the 49ers and the Saints of Tan. 49ers lose that game. Yeah. They will hear footsteps from the Arizona Cardinals. They would be tied. It's coming up next, our Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. What an unbelievable second half comeback by the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know about you, Brian. I never saw that come. Now, I don't know that anybody did. Kudos to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Detroit Lions got to somehow rebound going home against Tampa Bay next week. America's Game of the Week coming up next.